welcome Rana Hamadeh, who is joining us also in Moscow. It's been such a pleasure to follow your work from Rotterdam, where we're both supposedly based. And here we are now in the sixth edition of the Moscow Biennale, where you're contributing with your ambitious scale performance. So let's start with the background of your research and how it came about this project. So, as part, this is the last, latest episode of under the umbrella of Alien Encounters, which I started with uh, that performance in uh, at Witte de Witt, and which was already thinking through terms such as contagion, infection, uh, uh, hygiene, uh, immunity, and resistance. Contagion and infection and the plague in one basket, hygiene, immunity, and resistance in the other basket. And that was a moment during Vita de Witt conversation and performance where I was thinking through the politics of resistance coming from a, a place like Lebanon, from the background of the Syrian violence, and thinking of how to rethink this entire institution of resistance that has turned today in Lebanon and Syria into a, somehow a pre, uh, like a pretext for uh, military uh, oppression. Mm -hmm. And that performance that I had uh, ended with in the third uh, uh, movement. Maybe describe it a little bit how that materialized. Um, I'll, I'll just say that uh, because this is still the, the, the background of the background, sure. so it ended with a claim that I made that justice is the extent to which one can access the dramatic means of representation, justice as the measure to which one can access theater. And that came very much from the thoughts that I was having with regard to infection, to infect, to perform. And when I was thinking through the plague of Athens as, a, as an analogy for the Arab uh, uprisings and particularly the Syrian uprising, where I was thinking of the, the term resistance as resistance to infection and therefore resistance in that particular context becoming a counter-performative and a counter-revolutionary technology of power that perpetuates the power of the state. And just to have a zoom in mm. to the Syrian resistance and the way mm. you've been working with what's going on there, like how do you actually survey the situation and how, where do you get your main information as it shapes your work? With this particular work, after, after making so many detours previously through uh, many different uh, elements, such as science fiction, uh, uh, points of departure from Sun Ra, from uh, conversations with undocumented uh, immigrants uh, that I met in the sea, uh, not in the, I, I set a conversation with them in, the, in, the, in, 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 no, in Marseille. In Marseille. Okay. In Marseille. And that was sort of like it, uh, thinking through the histories of mining, the histories, uh, colonial histories of France in, in uh, Western Sahara, um, exploding uh, sort of so many uh, elements that do not speak uh, directly about what's going in Syria, but sort of I borrow through different uh, narratives, different histories. So you didn't I, need a motomo. Well, in facts and figures necessarily, because there are many ways to read uh, indeed. what's going on. And particularly that in the beginning, it was my, my main problem was that how to, the question was how to invent a language and to open up a discourse where there is in a space where there is this feel of no exit, right? It's an impasse. Absolutely. It's getting into an impasse where, where whenever uh, somebody is asked about, okay, what, how do you, how to respond to the intensity and the history of violence that is happening in Syria, the response is always, but Hezbollah is the resistance. How can we respond uh, to that? And with this particular project that I'm doing here, I decided to get back into that claim regarding the relations between justice and theater, and I decided to get particularly into the ritual, the theatrical ritual of uh, Ashura, 
which is the, uh, the base of the Shiite uh, Shiite thought or the manifestation of Shiite thinking which Hezbollah is as a, as a political party bases itself uh, it, exactly and I make claims upon Shiite thought where the, the ceremony of Ashura that uh, is the ceremony that re-witnesses uh, the unjust killing of Imam al Hussein, who is the grandson of Prophet Muhammad, where I claim that for Shiites, Hussein is not only a person that was unjustly killed, but he is the epitome or the, the, the abstraction of uh, uh, the pure image of the oppressed. So the killing of Hussein is for Shiites, and this is my claim, is a paradoxical uh, killing because Hussein is on one hand to, to act, for the oppressed to access language, to access representation, somebody had to be oppressed for the, fir the first person had to be oppressed and that first person is Hussein. But, but tell us a little bit more about Hussein in the sense of he was the grandson, the son of, so we have a bit of a context. So Hussein was the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad and he was, uh, uh, there was a political fight between him and uh, uh, Yazid and, this, and, and, uh, and that political fight was particularly regarding uh, who shall lead uh, the, the Muslim world, Tribal let's say. Economic differences. Political. Political. Probably has some economic tailing that we cannot foresee. Yeah. Okay. So but very much that. very political and with um, 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 uh, of course, we, of course, it relates to Hussein being uh, coming from the family of uh, of the Prophet, uh, and the other guy considered to be like uh, uh, interpreting uh, Islam differently. And this is not this is totally not where I, I uh, go into in my work. As much as I start, the starting point is the moment of the killing of the unjust killing. Unjust which is the pretext of Shiism. And it's where... The raison d'etre. Exactly, the raison d'etre of Shiism. And where, um, when I say, when the killing of... Uh, and this happened in a battle of 10 days in Karbala, in Iraq, in present-day Iraq. Uh, and during which Hussein was betrayed uh, by many of his followers, so who was left uh, in this battle was him and his, uh, some followers and his family in the face of a huge army. And the way that they were uh, slain with the children, with the women, uh, is considered uh, to be uh, like uh, an incredibly uh, huge event. And uh, so... And how do you take Ashura by its horns in your work now? Ashura is a theatrical ceremony where uh, Shiites take to the streets, uh, theater stages pop up uh, in the streets. Uh, there is a, a, an orator that plays the role of an actor, an audience that plays the role of an audience. There's the intensity of this theatricality of the witnessing of, the, of this unjust killing. And what happens is that through the theatrical witnessing, the, 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 the orations that tell the story, then the changing of accent of the orator that takes the, the audience towards the space of the battle, the chest beating that takes the audience into a, a moment of uh, trance where they access the battle even more, and the, then the moment of self-flagellation where the witnessing turns from being a theatrical witnessing into becoming an actual witnessing because there's blood. And this back and forth between the theatrical and the actual is what constitutes the Shia, the, who were oppressed throughout history. So uh, re gathering, reenacting the exactly. Karbala incident over and over. Exactly. And this is what, re what constitutes the Shia as testimonial subjects outside the court of law. And 
to, set, to constitute oneself as a testimonial subject, as a witness outside the court of law, and the court of law in this sense is the entire history of Islam, is what to me is, a, is an incredibly uh, radical question of how to, how to constitute oneself as a testimonial subject rather than in the place of the legal subject. And through that, I, which I think is a, is, uh, generates uh, a militant form of theater. And I ask, how did this, how is it possible that such a militant form of theater has transformed into militarized form of theater through today in Lebanon, Hezbollah's manifestation of their military power th during the Ashura ceremony that goes from the from reenacting oneself, one's oppression, and and becoming like uh, accessing justice through this theatrical ceremony into becoming an oppressor, and how through this, the during Ashura, this embodiment of the oppressed and the oppressor at once, how it has been, how it was uh, totally appropriated and transformed into becoming a total manifestation of power where today Hezbollah is fighting uh, alongside the Syrian regime to be uh, killing, uh, killing people. So, And, yes, uh, but what, yeah. what I did, uh, it's very important one thing that what I did in this work was that I wrote a, a script that is, the work is at all not about Ashura as much as takes Ashura as its material. So it is abstraction almost. It is, is indeed, and what I did was that I decoded the effects of Ashura and applied them to a script. Wow. And then I recoded that uh, through the voice. So all what the, the, this sound ch eight, eight channel uh, sound installation is uh, is the voice of one person who is reading the script, and that I re choreographed and reorganized the voice by applying the effects and the and the codes of Ashura, but but through sort of re choreographing these codes. So it became into a, uh, a musical composition, but also a proposition to work with a, with a different, to subverse the language.